Hey, this is YBR with Beeman G Drive, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about just how ridiculously fast the ESBR 800 is, because I never appreciate this thing for just how fast it is. So starting off, a quick demonstration of the speed. If we just floor it on this bumpy straightaway on West Coast USA, we are already well past 100 miles per hour, approaching 150 miles per hour just like that and we nearly reached it before we flew once again and completely wrecked the vehicle and we reached nearly 150 miles per hour while flying through the air sometimes on a less than stellar terrain this thing is ridiculously fast you just need to have the right situation for it for example sometimes the stability control can kick in and make it feel really slow i am flooring it right now and this is as fast as it goes. So we turn off the stability controller, put it to sport mode at the least, and then we get the power down again. And look at how fast this thing is up a steep hill. It was going like 90 miles per hour. And there was literally no way for me to avoid that crash because I was flying through the air because it accelerated so hard. And now that we have the electronic stability control in sport mode, you see going up this hill, it accelerates no problem even when I try to slide it around some. Here we have a really long downhill straightaway and we are literally flying through here going hundreds of miles per hour, rolling it over. Can we land on the wheels? I don't know, but you can see just how fast it was going because it just keeps sliding on its roof and it still had a ton of momentum after rolling on its roof for so long. And just like that, boom, we're over 100 miles per hour. Yeah, I'm not really trying to steer at all. I'm just trying to go fast in a straight line and it's working spec. Spectacularly. <laughs> That's kind of a funny reset. I found a way to immediately rip off my rear bumper with virtually no damage to everything else. The only two places this car really lacks is the handling and top speed. The handling is still good. It handles better than most of the cars in the game, but it doesn't handle as good as the regular SBR because it has another 500 pounds on that vehicle, and you can definitely feel it when you try to go around the corners. The second place it lacks is top speed. It tops out at around 170 miles per hour, so we're really close to being topped out here. So let's crash it with a beautiful flying crash that actually launched us outside of the normal map area. So there's a look at the damage, and you can tell this area is not as detailed as the other areas because you normally wouldn't drive here. But I think we can get back to the regular roads and continue driving on them from here if we wanted to. Yeah, we could have easily made it to the road, but the car decided, hold up, it's time to Beyblade, let it rip. Fun all over the place. Oh, look at that, we're stuck. Okay, go back a little farther, just drop it onto the ground. That's fine, we didn't need that front bumper. We don't even need this rear bumper. Bumpers are for people who are afraid of crashing. I'm not afraid of that. Look, I just crashed and there goes the rear bumper. And I think driving through this area could be really, really good at showing some straight line speed without having to worry about all of the bumps that are normally in the West Coast USA roads you've been driving on. We just got to get to the straightaway area, which is right here. Like this is a nice long straightaway we can use. I just need to fix this vehicle because, yeah, it's missing two of its wheels. That's not going to go very fast at all. Now we are ready to go. So just flooring it from here. We are already nearly up to 100 miles per hour. There's 100, 120, 30, 40, 150, 160, and we are pretty much topped out at this point. So now we let it fly, and boy does it fly. Normally from there, I land in the water. I don't normally fly all the way to the buildings and completely annihilate the vehicle. So now, Let's do some scientific testing. We're going to go to the drag strip on West Coast USA and we're going to see just how fast is this car in the quarter mile. And when you drag race the ESBR4, you're going to either love it or hate it. You're going to love it because it's really easy to do a consistent time because literally all you're doing is holding down the throttle and making sure you stay in a straight line, which is very, very easy. You might hate it because it's boring. You don't get to do anything fancy with the launch to have a perfect launch. There's no shifting involved to squeeze out a little bit more time. The time you get is probably just about going to be the time you get. And the time we got is 9.48 seconds. That is stupid fast. Let me give you some context here. This would be the fastest stock vehicle 
ever in the history of the world if it was a real vehicle. The Dodge Challenger SRT Demon, which is basically a drag racing car made to be street legal, is 9.65 seconds to do a quarter mile. The next fastest electric car, which would be like the Porsche Taycan Turbo S or the Tesla Model S P100D, those both take about 10.5 seconds to do a quarter mile time. That's how fast this car is, at least compared to real cars. Let's compare it to some of the other cars that are in the game. We'll start off with the most obvious comparison, which is gonna be the fastest stock version of the SBR4 that uses a gas powered engine, which would be the all wheel drive twin turbo stage two with the dual clutch transmission. And this one's of course a little bit more fun to drive because you actually get to launch the vehicle. And then if you wanted to, you could also manually shift the transmission to make it go just a little bit faster. But even if we did that, it's not gonna beat the ESBR. 10.923. In quarter mile racing, a second and a half difference is forever. That is a huge gap between those two vehicles. So again, let's change it up a little bit and see how it compares to the straight up racing version of the SBR4. We're gonna go with the hill climb with the dual clutch transmission, which is a little bit faster than the one with the sequential. And for this race, I actually have no idea which car is gonna be faster. I'm thinking it should be a pretty good race though. That's a perfectly reasonable launch because this car does not launch off the line good, but it does have more top end than the ESBR. Is that gonna be enough? No, that is still lower than the electric version. This is a car specifically made for racing and it is slower than the ESBR 800. Unbelievable. We're just gonna keep changing cars until we can find something as fast as it. The next obvious comparison would be maybe one of the Charrier FCVs. Because if we go to the hill climb over here, it's also very, very fast. But is it faster than the hill climb version of the SBR? I'm not sure. I know they're very, very close. So we're gonna find out right here, right now. It definitely feels like it launches a little bit better and it goes through the gear so fast, it feels more well suited for a drag race. And in the end, it is a little bit faster, but still slower than the ESBR 800. At this point, I feel like I can say, except for drag cars, none of the cars in the game are faster than the ESBR in the quarter mile. And yes, that is including the Wentworth DT40L Hero Edition. So a bus with rockets strapped to it is slower than a production electric vehicle. At least, I'm pretty sure of that fact. So we're gonna make sure by just doing a quick run with the Hero Bus at the drag strip, which goes really fast through the quarter mile actually, and it has a time of 9.908, which is a very impressive time, but not fast enough still. So now, for comparison's sake, how about we get a drag car so you can see just how close this thing is to an actual car made for drag racing. We're gonna go with the drag version of the Burnside Special, which has 1,300 horsepower. This thing is a monster of a vehicle that launches so hard it pops into the air, and this is where you actually need skill to control the vehicle to get a good time because you gotta make sure you don't do too big of a wheelie, you gotta make sure you get the right RPM for the launch. It's a lot of work. All that work, though, does get you a time of 8.4 seconds, which again, is kind of on another level than the electric car. But this is a car specifically built to drag race. The SBR, that's a regular production vehicle that you could use every single day and then take it to the drag strip and whoop on just about everybody there, except for the people who have cars specifically for drag racing. So the ESBR is very impressive in the quarter mile, but I should show you its weaknesses too. If, for example, we increase the length of the track significantly by using the highway strip, you'll see we will top out and we won't go nearly as fast. And one interesting thing you can notice is the car launches differently here than the drag strip because the drag strip had a prep surface with tons of grip. Here it doesn't have tons of grip, so it leaves a big fat skid mark as it accelerates. But back on the drag strip, with the electronic stability control off, it has a little skid and then it just gets grip the whole way. 
So we are now topped out at 160 miles per hour. So it was doing great through the first checkpoint, maybe even the second checkpoint. But here is where it really starts to struggle because we're topped out. This is as fast as we're going to go. 26.867. Is that fast? Is that slow? Nobody really knows until we have something to compare it to. So we're going to go through this again. But this time, we're going to be using the race version of the Hirochi we saw earlier at the drag strip. And in that situation, the electric car was faster. In this situation, however, I expect the race car to be quite a bit faster because they're about equal to the first checkpoint. They're both going like 150 miles per hour. And then by the second checkpoint, I'm going 180. They were still going 160. Next checkpoint, I'm at almost 200, still 160 for them. And then we come to the last checkpoint and the time is 24.860. So that's about two seconds faster. But here's an interesting fact. We can make the electric one faster if we really wanted to. However, at that point, it would no longer be a stock production vehicle. But just for fun, let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna take the ESBR 800 and there are just two parts we need to change out. They're related to the engine, but they're not the engine. We're gonna put the race adjustable final drives in both the front and rear differentials of the vehicle. And then we're gonna tune them a little bit because by default, they're still at 7.6. We're gonna bring them down to, let's use six even. That's a nice number to use. And this will make the car top out probably around 200 miles per hour, which should make it just as fast as the race version. So let's find out, make sure electronic stability control is off for the ideal launch. Really, it doesn't make too big of a difference with this car with the all wheel drive. You just mash that pedal and it'll work fine. So through the first checkpoint, about the same speed, still 150 miles per hour, but we are now accelerating more and more just like the race car did. In fact, it might be accelerating even more than the race car because we were at 200 miles per hour and then some. Finish line at 210 miles per hour with a time of 24.46. That is a little bit faster than the race car, but it's no longer stock. But that's just to give you an idea of just how much power is in these electric batteries. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I'll know. I can tell by looking at the quarter mile time this car has. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.